Hey Minecrafters, here I am with uh, my new Minecraft base counter design, which might be the most compact counter ever made. I have figured out all the bugs, and now I can perfectly stack things. Each layer is only too high, and each layer represents a digit. And I'll show you how to build it, how it works, every minute detail, and you'll find how simple it is to set up and maybe how uh, complex it was to figure out. And uh, so each layer is, uh, is a digit. This is base 7. And so if you were doing decimal, it, you'd have 1s, 10s, 100s digit. In base 7, you're going to have 1s, 7s, and then your 49 digit. And then the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 says how many 1s or how many 7s, how many... Uh, 49s you have and then you just add it all together and so right now I like to have things set up over here so it's 0 2 0 this would be 0 times 1 2 times 7 0 times 49 so it's 14 is the current number but if I press the button again it switches over now it's 15 and it's pretty responsive um, this is brand new. I uh, just came up with this a few days ago. So it still has a few things I'd like to add to it, things I'd like to work out, uh, but for the most part it's very functional. So once it got to 6, then it reset to 0 and put, added a number to 7, which makes sense. So 7 moved over 1, and now we have 3 times 7 plus 1, or plus 0 which would of course be 21. So this can actually count to 342. We're going to add another layer to this at the end and that's how I'll show you how to build this because uh, it's really easy to add new layers and that'll allow us to count to 2400 in case we ever needed that. But let me just show you how this works. Um, we'll add a redstone and connect this clock up to there and that's just going to keep it um, moving around and we can see exactly what's going on. So generally it's po this strip is powered and it uh, keeps a loop here, a tight loop where the cart moves around and activates a detector. And each time it's deactivated the cart can switch over until it gets to the end and is put on a track to reset the digit to zero. So let's look at the individual parts. Here we are. This is our loop. It consists of a power track, power track, then you place a regular track, then you place a detector track. And uh, they'll all just happen to fit in this way if you're building in the right direction. This loop is dependent on the southwest rule which is whenever a straight track runs into another straight track, like this, uh, the minecart will either travel south or west. Which isn't important for these because we're going to block off these sides. Um, so it only has the choice to go along the loop. But for the detector, uh, the detector track, it is important. So, with that powered, that uh, has this track this way, unpowered, the track turns over one and the cart can go into the next um, number, or this next upper value in the digit. And the way to finish this then, is we want to make sure that this is powered, otherwise that the cart won't loop properly. So we're going to add a torch here, and then a block. I'm using yellow blocks to indicate that is a block meant to power things. Blue and red blocks are alternating values in the digit. Teal blocks are input blocks, and green blocks are involved in the reset track. So hopefully that'll help simplify uh, what's going on here. So now that torch powers this block, which then powers the track. Make sure the torch is placed on the side and not the bottom. If it's placed on the bottom and you're stacking, you might accidentally create an inverter, which would not be good. Got a minecart, and uh, I'm going to show you a little thing here. 
this power track is powering the wire beside it. That's a problem. Um, so when we put the minecart in, it's going to go in the loop and it's going to mostly activate this consistently. So we're going to kill two birds with one stone and put a repeater here and set the repeater at three ticks and what that'll do is that'll make this kind of skippy signal into one constant signal and when the minecart switches over no signal of course simple enough and we're just going to build a bunch of those next to each other every time it switches the cart will come over and these power tracks not only speed up the cart they also help slow down the cart, which is important when switching tracks. Otherwise, the cart tends to do some glitchy things because it's moving so fast it might actually skip across multiple values if it's not slowed down. And so there's actually a duality there as far as their function. But simple enough, everything can be connected to this one power strip, which is at the top. This is the next component of our design. Uh, if you just pressed a button, its input value is a bit too long. And so what this is going to do is this is going to take the signal once the minecart is reset. Okay, that's wrong. Yeah. This is our, um, our detector track. It's going to be facing this direction once there's um, tracks next to it. But this track, once the minecart comes all the way around to the reset track, it'll go over this, and this will mark the lower layer to go up a level. And so it just sends that signal down. And the only way to send a signal through a solid block like this is with a repeater on this end or a repeater at the other end. We have the repeater at this end, and it sends the signal through. And this is specifically a certain circuit meant to shorten the time period at which uh, that activation or that deactivation in this uh, case lasts. And I'll show exactly what I mean there. You can see it here with these two torches. This one is delayed and when it starts, but they both end at the same time. Okay. Now they both start at the same time, but you see that this one ends quicker than the other. And the way that that works is we have an inverter. This is important. This only works when the signal is turning off. But this turns off here, but this redstone is already activated. It stays activated. So this is not on. This doesn't stay off until this is also off at the same time. kind of works like an AND gate there. And uh, when both are off, the, when they overlap as far as their off times, that's when it actually signals off and turns this inverter on. And so by only taking advantage of the overlap, you shorten the signal time. And that makes it so the minecart switch isn't up open too long and the minecart isn't going across multiple values. So that's pretty cool. And uh, this is the final part of the track. This is put at the top layer. And this will just be for the input doing the exact same thing there. Um, but it will convert an input signal from a pressure pad or button into a signal more like that. Not really short. All right, bedtime. I timed this so well, apparently. <sighs> OK. Let's build uh, <laughs> another layer. All right, we're on top and we're ready to build another layer. So the one thing I'm going to do before I do is remove this top layer here. Because uh, we're going to need to uh, set up that other yellow circuit instead of this input here. Now for me it's easy because I've already created the layers, I can just put blocks on top of the um, path layers and I'm all set. And so that's exactly what I'll do to set up the platform 
but you'll want to copy this platform design yourself. If uh, you're doing this from the first layer, which is important. So this would be flat land anyway. Like this. Can't wait to come to 2,400. Uh, this actually, right here, why don't we just set it up right now. This is a power block that'll power this track here for the return track. All right. Now to set up these, I'll alternate the colors again so that we don't have any confusion. Alright. And of course, if you're just building this yourself, you wouldn't have to be fancy with the blocks or anything. Just doing this for your sake, apparently. All right, one of those blocks. Now we set up a torch on each of these sides. These torches, as I said before, will power the tracks on this side, and it'll keep them powered too, because we want those to stay powered to encourage moving to the next loop. And now we're going to use the side of the torch to place ourselves some blocks. It takes a little finesse. But don't worry, I can handle it. I just can't handle switching colors. <laughs> I'm not even colorblind. Okay, and then on the top of the torch. Bam, bam, bam. Finally, for the blocks here, we'll cover up this strip. And this layer will then perfectly emulate the layer below it. And be ready for placing our uh, breadstone and minecart system. This is where your detector is going to be. So you're going to alternate power rails here, 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 here. And uh, detectors then, just hold right click and smooth sailing. Detectors are up, next it's the regular tracks. And so we'll just hold right click, smoothly sail right over here. And for the reset system, you're going to have two power tracks which are powered by that block you set up. And uh, just turn over here. I don't really, uh, you don't need that, this many uh, gold blocks or uh, power blocks. I just am doing whatever. I haven't really tested what the optimal um, fit is for each track. But for each different base system, you're going to have a longer system set up. And uh, it, I would expect it depends on that. If you want to make sure that the certain glitch happens, there's a certain glitch where the minecart will end up on this track when it's powering off, and then it'll stop the cart. Uh, you can just power with a torch on the side um, to make sure that the minecart never stops on the reset track. All right, this is this, and then we'll just um, add a power strip on top of the power reel here. Then we have our repeaters, and they need to be set to three ticks to make sure that they uh, keep the power smooth. So click, 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 click. And that's it. And so this is now our basic minecart setup. Let's set up the track up here. I put a powered one here. I don't think that's necessary. Let's put that there. And this, here. and because of the southwest rule, the cart will travel this way once it hits up on this track. And it can actually, we can have a block here, and it'll travel right through the block. In fact, we're going to have a block here, 
and it's going to travel right through this block as well. And we are able to power through the block with a redstone or two. Now we got to set up this uh, circuit down here to make sure it's right. Uh, and so we're going to add two inverters, one here, one here, a repeater here, and set it to four ticks. That delay is just right in my experiences, my testing. And this is going to power uh, this block. And with that powered block, we can run this repeater, keep that at one tick, and that'll repeat through there to the strip that's under this one. We can take out our teal and cover this up. Careful, don't ever click on uh, repeaters. They don't, you can't place blocks on them like that. And this is just going to be flat. Okay, so we'll place redstone. Uh, just like the design over there. Peter set to four. And this will be an inverter that activates both this repeater and this wire over here. All right, everything is set up to my knowledge. And so let's test it. Let's load this up with carts. And count to 2,400. Working. I'm going to redo this stairway to heaven. All right, we're all set up. We have everything zero 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 zero, and if we press the button, switches over to the next one, the next one, the next one. Three, four, five, six. Reset and then set a one on the seven digits. So that's it, simple, it counts, it's small, and anyone could really build it. I hope to see anyone's ideas for improving it further. The next thing to improve would be the reset track to make it faster.